Hello there, Capture One users, neophytes and acolytes. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to be doing more videos around the layers approach to Capture One, as well as a full series on workflow, start to finish, how do we edit a photograph? However, in the last layers it video, which I will put up in the link over here, you'll see that I didn't actually mention anything about cloning or healing, and that's because it's worth its own little short video. So today I'm going to be quickly looking at how do we clone and heal our images so that they can get rid of things like blemishes in the photograph, as well as dust spots and other paraphernalia captured on the actual sensor itself. Let's quickly talk about um, what a dust spot is. Now, unfortunately, we don't live in a sterile world, so it means that every now and again when we change our lenses or even even when we're just shooting in very dusty conditions, dust does manage to find its way onto the digital sensor that we're using or onto the filters or the lens that we have in front of our camera. What happens then is that you get a small little out of focus dot in your photograph. This is, it's out of focus because the light itself doesn't, it actually wraps around this tiny microscopic piece of crud that's sitting on your sensor. And regardless of how often we clean our sensors or how often we take it to be serviced and cleaned, you're going to get these dust spots from time to time. So we have to find ways to get around getting rid of them. All of the raw editors as well as Photoshop give us various means by which we can get rid of these dust spots that have landed onto our sensors. And the easiest way, of course, is to just take something called a dust spot removal tool, which is essentially a small little cloning brush and spotting on all of the, uh, the, the spots that we have. Dust spots become more evident in landscape photography because we're using smaller apertures. The smaller aperture means that there is a greater depth of field. And yes, that actually includes the dust spots that are on your sensor. If you're shooting wildlife and you very rarely go below, say, f8 on a long telephoto lens, chances are you're never going to see dust spots. But if you're shooting wide angle lenses with a small aperture, chances are you're going to see dust spots and often a lot of them, particularly if you're chasing things like sunbursts, which have very small apertures of f18 or f22 even. So then you're definitely going to start seeing dust spots. Capture One gives us several options available to be able to remove the dust and the, the crud from our sensors itself. So I'm going to dive straight straight into it, into Capture One, and I have several photographs taken a few years ago in Namibia during one of our Composing the Dunes workshops with Nature's Light. Uh, oh, actually, I also have a photograph from Botswana. So let's start with the image from Botswana, right? This is in Kubu Island. If you look at the image straight off at the moment, and we'll go into our adjust panel so you can see, uh, I have done some adjustments over here already, uh, just to get it from the base level, which was this. It looks fairly clean. I don't see many dust spots or anything. And even if I zoom into the image, oh, already, there we go. There's one, one uh, dust spot over there. There's a dust spot over here. Um, there's probably more around. So Capture One gives us several options in terms of getting rid of the dust spots on our cameras. The first one, which is pretty magical, works on the base layer. And for that, what we'll do is you go through to your refine tab in the top right hand corner of your tablets and you will see there under the dust removal you have a dust re remove dust uh, button if i hit that it automatically works out if there's any dust in the image and it removes it having looked at this image a moment ago you will see suddenly there is no dust available in the image it's gone just to see what it looked like before we'll go undo and there you go there's our little dust spot if i redo that there you go, I have no dust spots. So the very first thing you can do is you can remove the dust simply by hitting remove dust and it should get rid of all of your dust spots. That's the easy cheats way out. I don't need to think about it any further. It's pretty magical. However, sometimes you're going to have nastier pieces of gunk in your sensor and these are going to be quite hard to potentially get rid of. Usually, as I say, the remove dust feature does a very good job of this, but if it doesn't, we need to know how to do this manually. The first technique that Capture One gives you is the simple remove dust spot, which is on the dust removal tool, you'll see you have a drop down menu. You've got remove dust and remove spot. Now there's two options here simply because there are different algorithms involved, or at least that's what Capture One says, is that there's different algorithms for remove dust and remove spot. Remove dust is a small out of focus little spot inside your sensor. Remove spot 
could be anything from crud that's inside the scene, so a piece of litter, or, for instance, uh, a piece of hair that has had, happened to get onto your sensor or your lens. So it has a different pattern to it, hence it has a different algorithm to be able to remove it. So these are the first options, and you can use these either on a new layer or on the base layer itself. So I'm going to say remove dust for the time being, and I've used the shortcut key Q simply so that it aligns with Photoshop when you're using that. And as you move about your image, you should see, aha, there we go, there's some dust. And all I do is I take my dust spot removal tool, which has a little cross in the center. You can make it bigger or smaller using your square brackets or the mouse wheel if you're on a PC. And you click that and your dust spot disappears. Sometimes it's quite difficult to actually see your dust spots. So first, it's sometimes simpler to be able to visualize those spots. The simplest way to actually visualize your spots is to first create a special layer that is designed purely to be able to see your spots. Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw have this built in. It's a little button that basically creates high pass filter so that you can be able to see where your, your spots are. Capture One doesn't have that built in. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to create a layer that makes the spots more obvious. And this is something dating back to the early days of Photoshop, where you would create a new layer and you'd change the curves or the levels to be able to see your spots. I'm gonna create two full layers. My first layer, so you click on the plus button and you say new filled adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this my healing layer. I'm gonna create another full adjustment layer, filled adjustment layer there, and we're gonna call this crud or rubbish or to delete or anything you'd like to call it. But basically this is gonna be our visualized layer. We're not gonna work on this layer. All we're doing is we're creating this so that we can see our spots. Now in this layer, I'm gonna go down to my lights over here and I'm going to take my contrast and I'm gonna slam it all the way to the right hand side. And then I'm gonna take my highlights and slam that all the way to the left hand side. And I'm gonna take my shadow and I'm gonna slam that all the way to the right hand side. And then last off, I'm also gonna go down to my clarity, push that across and my structure to say 50, 55 or something like that. And immediately you should be able to see that I have several spots inside my image now. Uh, if I zoom in, sorry, you'll have to excuse the really wonky horizon on this image as well. But now you can see I've got a mountain of spots over here. Now the various options that are available to us, of course, is we could go into our layers and at the bottom, I can go into my base image layer and I can go to refine and I can hit my spot, remove spot tool, and I can then just go around and I can remove them. And it's click, click, and click. The thing you need to be aware of with clicking all of these is that Capture One has a limit to the number of spots that it can actually put onto your screen. I think it's 99. If you were going to use this technique, you could just continue with this and do this, and as long as you don't have more than 99 spots, you're absolutely fine. If you have more than that, then you would have to use the healing brush, which is a slightly different algorithm. Now, my personal preference, and I'm gonna just undo all of these, is I actually prefer using the healing brush as opposed to the dust spot tool, because sometimes you get things like a piece of hair or lint, and that isn't a single, single spot, that is actually a linear pattern, so you have to draw over it with a brush. To be able to get to that tool, what we're gonna do is you're going to come up to your top tool tablet over here and you will look for your healing brush. So you've got your healing mask here. Uh, shortcut key J in my, in my instance. All I need to do is draw around it and it automatically chooses an area that it's going to want to take from, which is absolutely fantastic because if it makes a mistake, all you do is you can grab what it gives us its source point and you can shift it about. Although 90% of the time I find that it is absolutely fine and it doesn't actually need to be, you can see I have quite a lot, but just as an example over here, this is not that I'm gonna get rid of this in reality, but if I then draw my healing brush over that, it removes it as well. I'm just gonna undo that. So I can go around my image and I can clean up all of my spots. And I should probably zoom in a little bit more and I might speed this up because there are a lot of spots. This was a very dirty sensor.
Right, so I've gone around my image and I've cleaned up everything. You can see that if I take my he my heel layer over here, and it should really actually be underneath, but it doesn't make a difference over here. Uh, if I take my heel layer and I switch it off, you can see my spots reappear. I've now cleaned my image. All I need to do is get rid of my crud layer. So I'll highlight my crud layer and I will delete it. And there you go. My spots are cleaned and done nicely. Now, the advantage of this technique is that you can use it as a series of layers over and above any other edits that you've done before. So for instance, I have an image here in Namibia and it definitely has some spots inside there, but it's already been adjusted. You can see I have several layer adjustments inside here. So to be able to visualize those spots, once more, I can create my two layers and there's actually a shortcut to this, which I will show you in at the end of the video. So I'll create my two layers. So first I've got my healing layer. I'm being a bit of a Muppet here. It's actually far easier just to select create new healing layer than to create a new layer and then name it healing layer. Anyway, that's best practice. And then the second one, which will be a full adjustment layer is going to be my crud layer. There you go. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take our brightness, bring it down slightly, take a contrast across, take highlight, shadow, and my clarity and yeah that should oh gosh there we go we can see already i have some pretty bad spots over here including these large uh, circles now these large circles are created by dust that's on the on the filter in the front of the lens not on the sensor the small spots those are sensor spots so again once more i can go into my healing layer and i can quickly clean these up and this is where having the healing layer works so well, because now if I'm using a large brush like this, I can actually clean these huge spots as well. So I'm gonna choose that from around there. Let's see if that's gonna blend it. There we go, that's nice. And that's blended it. And we're just gonna blend it, choose over there. And we've also got this spot. Right. That's it, right. So now I have cleaned up those little spots and I can continue to clean up the rest of my spots. Right, there we go. That looks like it's also another one of those big lines. So once more, I can create a nice, uh, not quite happy with that. Let's bring it into that. Maybe bring it up a touch. There we go, that's better. And right, so. Now I've gone and cleaned all my spots. It's looking a lot better. Uh, if I were to take away my heel layer, you'll see, there you go. Right, take away my crud layer now by deleting that. And we now have a clean image that we could continue editing if we wanted to, or we can now output. So that's the technique we can use to be able to visualize our spots. And we can use the healing brush to be able to remove it. Obviously, we also still have the clone tool. Now the clone tool works exactly as it would in Photoshop. It creates a direct copy of whatever it is copying from. And you can feather that tool as well. You can also feather your healing brush simply by using your shift and your square brackets while you're moving it. Um, I don't necessarily use the clone tool unless I'm trying to reconstruct some part of the image. Uh, let's see if I can find an example of that, for instance. So let's say we are reconstructing this over here. Healing brush would sometimes create a little bit of a haze. So I'm gonna just create my clone tool. You, you create your source point by hitting option and clicking on the screen and then you just paint over the area you're wanting to paint over. As you can see it doesn't necessarily blend perfectly so what you have to do is you have to shift your source point until it matches 100%. It is a useful tool to use. I do find it's not as useful as the healing brush, but you do need to have it there as an option. One of the cool things, of course, is that because this is Capture One, you can basically copy and paste any settings across to any image. You can also copy and paste your, um, your healing spots to other images, and you can do that in several ways as well. And I'll put together a video on copying, copying and pasting settings in future. To copy any of the adjustments inside your image, you hit Shift Command C. That'll then copy all the image uh, adjustments, and you can see those adjustments in the Style button. And under Style, you see you have your Adjustments clipboard. Inside the clipboard, anything that's ticked is going to indicate what has been copied and which will be placed across to. Uh, the other images that you're going to be working on. You'd hit Shift Command V and those adjustments are going to be pasted onto that image. You can choose which adjustments you want and which ones you don't. There are other techniques, but I will go through those in a video about copying and pasting on its own. 
Now, one of the cool things about this is that we can create a quick style so that it's literally just a, a few mouse clicks and we can create our visualize and healing layer. To create our visualize tool, what we're going to do is we're going to create first our healing layer. So we're going to say new heal layer. Then we're going to say new filled adjustment layer. And in our filled adjustment layer, we're going to call that crud. There we go. And we're going to do the usual setups that we've done did in the past. So we'll take our highlight, we'll take our shadows, we will move our clarity all the way across, we'll take our contrast and we'll push that across to the right hand side and we'll take our brightness and we'll bring that back a little bit just to make it like slightly easier to visualize. If you want to you can also bring in your levels and everything because basically what we're trying to do is see what the, what's happening in our mid-tones of the image because that's where the, the dust spots tend to reside in the mid-tones of the image. Okay once we've got that we're not going to do anything now to clean up the image or anything. We're going to go across into our style tab and in our style tab, we'll then go to the little menu on the right hand side, click on that and you say save custom style. At the moment, you'll see that the heel layer has an um, exclamation mark next to it and it isn't ticked. That's because there's nothing inside the heel layer yet. That's fine. We want to keep it that way. But to ensure that we include this in our new style, we click on the layers and we say yes, tick it. So now you'll see you've got a little gray tick next to it. And we're going to say save and we'll call it crud. There we go for the time being. All right, inside my custom styles, you'll now see I have crud. So if I click on crud, it automatically is going to land up on your image. So let's try this out. Let's go to this image here. And if I go to my custom styles and I say crud, right, it's already there. So now I can see where all my dust spots are. Attentive viewers will notice I already have one over here called visualize dust. So I've just created the crud for this particular tutorial. Visualize dust does exactly the same thing. I have the same settings and everything, except for one little trick. As viewers know, I am a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts. And I find that even going through to the styles tab is a waste of time. So I've created my own custom shortcut. Command one is going to give me my visualize mask tool. And then I can just go ahead and I can start cleaning my image and getting rid of the dust spots. To be able to do this, all you need to do is go into the top menu, go into edit keyboard shortcuts, and you'll see on the right hand side, you've got custom shortcuts. And I've just create, said apply style, visualize dust, command one. And that's it. That's a nice easy way to be able to hit a single pair of buttons and you can see where your dust spots are and continue editing from there. The great thing about this is you can apply this at the end of an editing workflow or at the beginning of an editing workflow. It's going to make no difference. I hope you found this useful in being able to clean up your images. I will continue with more workflow videos in future. Until then though, cheers.